Think Realty Nation is your host, Avi Golhar. Welcome to the Think Realty Podcast. In this podcast, during this show, you're going to learn one thing. Where the unforeseen opportunities are in real estate investing. And you're going to hear that from my good friend and private lender right here in Atlanta, Kenneth Igway with Baker Collins & Company. That's the one thing that I want you to walk away with. Outside of all the other awesome information that Kenneth will share with us today, that's the one thing that I need you to focus on and know that there are still unforeseen opportunities that you can take advantage of in the Atlanta area and surrounding areas, secondary and tertiary markets. And I'm also going to ask Kenneth about how COVID-19 has changed the lending landscape and what you can do about it to really set yourself up for 2020 and beyond with a working relationship with Baker Collins and company so that you can get your financing needs all squared away and taken care of. That's what's on the show today. Let's get into it. But before we do, huge shout out um, to the sponsor of today's podcast, which is Clint Coons of Anderson Business Advisors, who's nationally recognized for providing bulletproof asset protection, tax, and business strategy advice to real estate investors. Go to www.getbulletprooftoday.com and receive Clint's book, Asset Protection for Real Estate Investors, for free while supplies last. All right, I like to catch to the chase. Let's get to it. Kenneth, welcome to the show, man. How are you doing? Hey, Abby. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing great, man. So give us a little background. Who are you? What do you do? When did you just start Baker Collins, and why did you do it? Sure, no problem. Well, first and foremost, um, I'm a private lender. I like to, I'm a recovering investment banker. Um, I was in that world for a while and kind of uh, segued into the private lending space back in 2015. Uh, I love investment banking, love the math, love the work, but uh, we really felt that we could add a lot of value to kind of the retail borrowers. So we decided to kind of create Baker Collins uh, because we, we felt that there was a, a void or so a chasm within the private lending space. A lot of people were financing projects just through a Google search. And I think there's a much better, more efficient way to do that. And as a result, Baker Collins was born. Um, you know, we finance residential, uh, multifamily, I'm sorry, residential uh, renovation loans, new construction projects, as well as rental properties. And we felt that there was just kind of a need there for a lot of investors because they just couldn't essentially access capital or access capital markets in a, in a, in a way in which we thought was a little bit more, be a little bit more efficient. Got it. So when it comes to COVID-19, I mean, this has been a very interesting conversation over the last couple of months. Uh, yeah. What are you seeing out there from a finance, from the private financing perspective? What's going on with private lenders? Is it going to ease up at any point in time for residential, uh, long-term residential rental investors? What's the deal? What should I be concerned about? What should I be looking forward to in the, in, for the rest of this year in 2020? And then, of course, in 2021. So let's kind of put private lending in three categories based off of COVID-19. COVID essentially, first category, uh, a lot of lenders have decided to essentially close their doors, unfortunately. And one of the biggest reasons for that is because of the balance sheet that some of these folks have. It's hard to kind of not generate revenue and be able to uh, still keep operations open. Then the second category would be more so folks who are still lending um, or they're still in business, but they've suspended operations. Third category is where we would be, essentially, we're still lending. However, we have modified lending uh, guidelines to kind of fit uh, the, the risk that we believe, uh, that the, more, the, the bigger risk that we're going to be taking on because of COVID. COVID has definitely changed the lending landscape. Um, you know, the days of um, high leverage, low interest rates, those, are, um, those, aren't, those aren't going to come back in a while. You know, for example, um, you know, pre-COVID, there are some folks that are offering 100% financing. That particular product is probably not going to come back for a while. Even the folks who are offering 90% loan to cost, essentially 10% as a down payment, that's also has changed. A lot of lenders have decided, hey, look, if we're going to lend in this environment, we're going to want to make certain that our, our, our capital is protected as best as we can. We still have to be able to lend because that's essentially our business model, and that's how we generate revenue. But we have to do it in a very prudent and a very systematic way. Interesting. So from what I'm hearing and, and just maybe regurgitating some of this stuff to you, lending is still happening. It's not Correct. happening in the same capacity Correct. as it was pre-COVID, but it's still happening. So what do I need to do as a borrower 
then 2020 to set myself up so that I can fit into the financing bucket, say for Baker Collins and company, and get loans and still actively do deals without putting my acquisition strategy on pause. So one of the things I always tell investors, whether they're new or very experienced, because obviously we're, we're in a new world. I mean, uh, I always call the post COVID era, brave new world. And one of the things I always share with folks is number one, liquidity. You have to make certain that you do have more liquidity to get into some of these projects. Um, we as a firm, we are kind of wanting to see more of that. And we want to make certain that folks don't overextend themselves. Number two, experience. Um, the folks that have a little bit more experience, obviously, are going to be able to, we're going to provide a little higher leverage in some cases. And if you don't necessarily have a lot of experience, first time investors are great. We work with them quite often. We finance them quite often. Um, but if you are wanting kind of better interest rates and things of that sort, you may want to consider partnering up with someone who has a little bit more experience. So therefore, they can kind of add more essentially value to the, to the partnership that you guys are bringing. And lastly, we are looking at the deals and making certain the deals make sense. Um, again, pre-COVID, um, you know, a lot of lenders, a lot of capital partners were very aggressive with loan to values. Um, those have definitely come down uh, because of COVID. Um, Post-COVID, we want folks to find stronger deals or maybe able or maybe negotiate more with the seller to see if you can get a discount in the price point because of kind of the lending that's actually happening now as well. But even with all that said, we just want to make certain that people are in a good project and we're working with folks that have enough resources to get into the project and make certain that they can sustain themselves throughout the project for a successful exit. So for investors to survive and thrive in this brave new wor world, as you call it, mm -hmm. A, I need more capital down. Correct. I need to be able to carry it, worst case scenario, and I need to ensure its profitability. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing, what are some of the flipping turnaround times that you're seeing? Are they still three to six months or are they for a light renovation? I know there's a lot of gray area there. Yeah. So let me maybe fill in some color. Uh, so light renovation, uh, say under $35,000, $40,000 in reno. For that kind of property, southwest Atlanta, are you expecting that then to be a three to six month project? Do you expect delays? Are you expecting that then as a result to take eight to nine, 10 months? Because that also has a negative yield, uh, a relative negative yield on overall profit margin, just overall time frame. What are your thoughts there? So we're ex we, we are expecting for deals to take a little longer to, for folks to exit out a little longer out of these deals. Yeah. Um, you know, the typical fix and flip here in Atlanta is approximately four to six months. And we do expect that to be a little longer now. And a lot of that is because of all the, I, I, all the ancillary activities around um, uh, lending. Uh, for example, it's taking a little longer to get some appraisers out. It's taking a little longer for title to come back because of yeah. the social distancing that we actually are seeing and we are adhering to. It's taking a little longer for attorneys to essentially close deals because they have to be very creative as to how they close loans. So Kenneth, from that perspective, for me, it makes sense as a real estate investor to continuously be looking for opportunities, partnering with the right capital partners, uh, such as Baker Collins and company and saying, hey, here's the goal, here's where I want to be at the end of 2020, 2021, and here's where I see the future of real estate investing for me, whether I'm flipping, whether I'm doing a lot of single family rentals, commercial multifamily, et cetera, finding the right capital partner, finding the right financier that truly understands the game is going to be really, really important for somebody like me that is an investor that's always looking for deals. And so I certainly appreciate you coming on. Uh, it's been really, really helpful, just even from an insight perspective into what's going on in Atlanta. Also, and just your thoughts on a COVID-19 market, and what investors can be doing and continue to do to make sure that they're set up properly for the next year and a half. So thanks so much, man. I certainly appreciate the time. And Think Realty Nation, I want to make sure that you have all of Kenneth's information. If you want to start engaging Baker Collins and Company for your financing needs, make sure that you go to www.bakercollins.com. Again, bakercollins.com. And also be sure to visit uh, the Atlanta Think Realty Expo. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Kenneth will be there on a private lending panel answering some of your questions as well. And make sure uh, when you do see him, uh, give him a bunch of elbow bumps for me because we're clearly not shaking hands at this point. But anyway. <laughs> Thank you.
Um, this next segment is brought to you by Nevada Real Estate Investments, your premier source for cash flow investment property. Check out www.turnkeyrealestateinvestments.com. How do you scale safely with private money? Well, that's an interesting question that Kat answered on the Think Realty blog. And she mentioned a couple of things. One, how does an investor go about limiting risk while maximizing reward? A couple of bullet points here. Number one, private lenders themselves know what to do and how to help. But there are also others that are scam artists. So you really want to be sure that you're dealing with a very well-known and a very well-reputable private lender. Ask them for references. And, um, and what Kat says here uh, in the article, quote, according to a 2019 joint research effort called Exposed to Scams from the BBB and Stanford Center on Longevity, knowing about a scam method makes you 49% likely or less likely to be victimized by it. Pretending to be a private lender and asking for large application fees or any other kind of upfront fees, they're probably, you know, not lenders. They're probably just folks that are trying to capture, you know, some revenue up front and then kick the can down the road and never get your deal funded. Number two, there are other lenders, the brokers out there, uh, that will steal the identities of legitimate private lenders, making it almost impossible to know. So just be very, very cautious. Verify, 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 verify absolutely everything. The, I think this, uh, this blog is a must read for any real estate investor that's looking for private capital. Uh, number two, you want to find lenders through trusted parties. Uh, you want to check out the American Association of Private Lenders here. They go by a, um, they have a very amazing code of ethics that every private lender lives by. And they also report, uh, it's a very, it's, it's an amazing society of lenders that also, if they do find other lenders that are not paying attention to this code of ethics and they're violating these code of ethics, they actually report uh, these lenders and these brokers and these scam artists to AAPL, the American Association of Private Lenders, who also will then take the necessary action. So AAPL has done an amazing job in cleaning up the space. So love you guys. Keep doing, keep doing an amazing job. And then, of course, number three, complete due diligence. You know, for the property, for the private lender themselves, um, a couple of red flags here that Kat talks about. The lender pressures you, uh, will pressure you to act too quickly. The lender will charge unusually high application fees. An internet search of the company turns up a different website address uh, than the information provided. So really be aware of this. And again, you want to make sure that you read this blog. It's incredible information. This podcast is not possible without the help of our sponsor, uh, Clint Coons of Anderson Business Advisors, nationally recognized for, for providing bulletproof asset protection, tax, and business strategy advice to real estate investors. Go to getbulletprooftoday.com and receive Clint's book, Asset Protection for Real Estate Investors, for free while supplies last. Thank you, Realty Nation. Until next time, happy investing.